What up, squad? Mizzy World Entertainment is back to present episode two of Mad Mizzy Sports Morning Show. And to start off episode two, let's touch on some non sports related sports news. The first one, of course, I want to start with is the news of newly named Washington Commanders running back Brian Robinson being shot in a apparent attempted robbery this past weekend. I want to speak on this just because it, it really reflects what goes on in our culture. I was just watching the news earlier and I was seeing that we got what uh, 23 gang members from Atlanta being charged with um, breaking aside celebrities' homes and talk about them and raps and this, that, and the third. And it's just this this aura of negativity around positivity. You get what I'm saying? Like I just don't get why we as a culture and a people accept this and accept this this foolery towards some of our 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 heroes you get what i'm saying these dudes that are athletes that are professional athletes are heroes to these kids and we out here robbing them and shooting them and, and doing all this goofy stuff just to make raps like that that's that's sad to me man i hope brian robinson makes a a, a quick recovery that has a great career in the nfl and this doesn't affect him in any negative manner as far as monetarily but yo we gotta address this in our community man stop doing stuff just so y'all can make raps or stop doing stuff to working nine to five people even if they getting bread there's people out here that's getting bread in the streets but y'all don't want to move on them because y'all know what the what the response would be come on man like do what you do in your lane that's a football player what you what you what you trying to run down on him for then shooting him and all this extra stuff man i, I it disgusted me when i when i when i when i read that story you feel what i'm saying but to move on let's move on to the duke volleyball player the female rachel richardson who said she was berated with racial slurs during a volleyball match against byu brigham young university and broke down that it really took the referees a uh, slow reaction time to even react to it they said this woman was being berated with she said she was getting racial slurs every time she served the volleyball now i've never been to a volleyball match i don't know how many times you serve but even if you do it one time not even the black people it, why aren't the white people first quick to jump up to me it reflects how still in today's society in 2022 is still a group of people that feel as though minorities should be in a certain box to be in a certain lane they shouldn't we shouldn't be able to do anything in the united states we should be able to do certain things in the united states we want to crack our heads and play football make millions that way yeah that's cool you want to jump up and down run up and down the court and slam on somebody yeah that's cool you want to come in the volleyball oh no black girl you want to come play tennis oh no black girl you want to come play golf oh no black girl you want to play soccer oh no black girl that's something we got to address as far as mentally with them trying to open up and act like they opening up to equality when it's really they just want equality in certain lanes in certain realms they still don't want us to come in and get that easy uh invest in money they still don't want us to get that 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 passive income you feel what i'm saying they still don't want people like me to move forward people like wiz to move forward unless you go totally out the way to break down that fear factor that uncomfortability you get what I'm saying? You got to be Tiger Woods out there. You got and even then, you feel what I'm saying? As soon as you do one negative thing, you tossed under the bus. You reminded of your skin color. You get what I'm saying? It's sad that in 2022, a woman has to go through that and and go through that alone. You get what I'm saying? This is at BYU versus Duke. How is how is this not starting a riot? How is this not starting a fight? How is this not starting something? How is this not starting uproar? Because a lot of people have that mentality. A lot of people share that man's opinions. It's sad, man. And it's something that we need to address worldwide. You get what I'm saying? Nationally. So that that's sad to me. I hope Brigham Young University addresses that, addresses that um that fan because they're saying they're not connected with the school. But the simple fact that nobody in that staff said anything, no coaching, no, 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 uh, no bystander, because if my daughter's playing volleyball and they saying racial slurs, oh, you, you got something personal with my daughter, bro? Because we can take this outside. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, you want to keep it the trash talking with sports? That's cool. But as soon as you make it personal, you start saying racial slurs or oh, we can take this somewhere else, bro. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got to stay in this in this confined facility. Let's take this outside.
You feel what I'm saying? Like that's 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 sickening. That's sickening, man. But let's move on into actual sports news. You feel what I'm saying? The big news. My Niners have finally, well not finally, have decided to keep Jimmy Garoppolo and restructure his contract. One year guarantees $6.5 million with uh, with an initiative clause that allows him to gain up to 10, 16 million if he plays and wins games. Now, let me address that first and foremost. The only way Jimmy Garoppolo is playing quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers is if Trey Lance gets hurt. That is the only way he is playing quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. If, if Trey Lance comes out and stinks it up, He's not coming in and playing. They're not going to do that to Trey Lance, who they invested in and who they believe in. But Jimmy Garoppolo is a way more adequate and way more valuable backup than Nate Sudfield or Brock Purdy. And I think we it was shown and reflected in the Houston Texans game. I don't think it was more so a thing about Trey Lance because he was moving the ball. You feel what I'm saying? We just couldn't get a little bit more traction while he was out there. But the other backups couldn't do anything. You feel what I'm saying? Trey Lance only played three drives. So I think it was more so a reflection of what Kyle Shanahan believes of our backup situation. Not only that, I feel as though he wants to get something from Jimmy Garoppolo. Like every analyst on every mainstream media wants to say. He was in the Super Bowl two years ago. He was in the NFC Championship game a year ago. So you don't want to just release him. You don't want to just let him walk. You get what I'm saying? But his salary makes it hard for him to move, and the salary makes it hard for us to keep him. So you bring it down to $6.5 million. Now we can keep you on the roster without feeling like we, we hindering the rest of the team. And, and now it makes it easier to move you in the future when somebody who we know will get hurt. A quarterback's going to get hurt, or a quarterback's going to stink it up. And Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be a valuable asset at that point to move at $6.5 million a year. Not to mention now we got a third round compensatory pick if he decides to leave next year, which we already know he is. The, the, the contract is up. That's it. You get what I'm saying? Don't listen to these mainstream medias of, oh, it's going to be weird. It's going to be the, it's not going to be any of that. At the end of the day, Jimmy G didn't want to go be a backup for $25 million in New York somewhere or somewhere. Anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like get released and then go be a backup at New York for probably the same amount of money when you could be a backup in San Francisco, have your trade clause in and get traded to where you want to at the end of the year or decide to where you want to go at the end of this year. You get what I'm saying? So to me, it was a brilliant move. It's a win-win. And people saying that it's going to be weird to just people that want to see the downfall of my Niners. Niners! Traeria, still your squad, bro. I'm guaranteeing you Kyle Shanahan called him and said, the only way Jimmy G is playing is if you get hurt. We need a valuable backup. Okay, cool. And if we get a trade offer that's, that, that, that moves us in time, we're trading him. We're going to trade him. Point blank, period. Let's move on to some more news, though. Some more positive news, man. And we talking about um, minorities in sports that... People probably don't want to see them in. Serena Williams has been one of the biggest pioneers in tennis history, sports history, women's history. And she came out and won again last night in straight sets, man. Congratulations to Serena. She's been struggling lately as she's dwindling down the end of her career. She's saying that she's not going to be playing. She's gearing towards not playing tennis anymore. So uh, with LeBron James coming at the end of his career, Serena Williams coming at the end of his uh, of her career, Tom Brady coming at the end of his career. To me, who is more impressive out of all of them with the longevity, the longevity and the dominance to go with it? Man, it, it's been a... Uh, uh, quite a fun run as a sports fan to view these athletes and see them perform on the biggest stages but for me i gotta say serena coming in at such a young age and dominating for so long has got to be the most impressive to me coming into a sport that's a predominantly white sport coming into a sport that's a predominantly male sport and coming in and creating not just a national name but a worldwide name you get what i'm saying and a generational wealth through tennis is just astonishing to me and something that I can't wait till her documentary come out. You feel what I'm saying? How like did Derek Jeter, I can't wait for them to culminate what her career meant for the game of tennis. You get what I'm saying? So I'm gonna go with Serena. But to move on, like I said, I like to touch on everything. I don't really have anything on college basketball. Let's move on to the NBA, man. 
What does it mean that Pat Bev is coming to the Los Angeles Lakers? For me, I don't see no way that this works with Pat Beverly and Russell Westbrook. Pat Beverly is a better defender. He's a more consistent shooter. He's more willing to do what it takes to win, and he doesn't have the ego that you have to fight with. So I don't see if Russell Westbrook wasn't willing to abide by what Anthony Davis and LeBron James is asking him to do. Do you think that Pat Beverly coming in is going to make that better? No, I think that's going to add more fuel to the fire. Now, Pat Beverly said he feels as though if he comes in and they don't move anybody, they're a playoff team. But I see that being very volatile, especially if you hit in the middle of the season. Pat Bev's getting a lot more playing time. Russell Westbrook sitting there pouting. It's not going to be good. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm going to agree with what the mainstream is saying that this reflects that the Lakers are gearing towards trying to get Russell Westbrook out of there where maybe he's going to come to my Pacers I, I would take him because we've been irrelevant you feel what I'm saying but I don't know if they willing to give up Buddy Hill and, and and Tyler or or you know what I'm saying risk the the development of Tyler Tyler Halliburton um I, I don't know so I don't know what the market is for Russ I'm gonna just say that 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 move is clear an indication that they trying to push Russell Westbrook out of Los Angeles in my opinion which is crazy because he's from the Los Angeles Englewood area man that's 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 crazy fool what I'm saying but to end it off man uh I'm gonna just say this man King Ryan Tank Davis please if y'all gonna fight man don't hype this joint up for six to ten years like Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather and then darn sure don't do with Terrence Bud Crawford and Evo Spence Jr. are doing. And that's just giving little teasers to the fans, but never actually throwing any punches. They be in the back arguing and debating, but ain't throwing no, I want to see y'all in the ring swinging them hands. Feel what I'm saying? So Tank Davis, King Ryan, can y'all make the fight within the next year or two? Please? I think King Ryan and Tank both want it though, so I see it happening soon. Y'all know what it is, Mad Mizzy Sports Morning Show, robberies. Racial slurs. Uh, Jimmy G back with my Niners. Serena Williams winning. Uh, Russell Westbrook, Pat Bev. Mad Mizzy Sports. Morning show. The number one spot to start your day off. Like, comment, share, subscribe, listen. Y'all know what it is, man. Have a productive day. Gang.